Dear students, in this module, we are going to continue to explore the secondary structures in proteins. The secondary structures or the two prime structures in proteins are formed as a result of hydrogen bonding between N and C termini of different amino acids which are present in the backbone of the proteins. So as a result, complex substructures are formed which we call the secondary structures. The examples of these structures include the alpha helices, the beta sheets, and in this module, we are going to look at some other types of these secondary structures as well. The next secondary structure that we are going to look at is the loop. As shown here in the slide, the loops in the green part are essentially special secondary structures which bring together alpha helices or beta sheets together. So they simply join them by taking the ends of alpha helices or beta sheets and hold them by the two ends of the loops. So instead of this alpha helix, it could be a beta sheet which is brought together by a loop here so these are two beta sheets and similarly you can have another loop another loop that can bring together two different beta sheets again so these two loops are actually bringing together one two and three beta sheets so in this way the loops they couple the alpha helices and beta sheets alpha helices or beta sheets, beta sheets, or beta sheets, alpha helices, and alpha helices as well. So, as I just mentioned, that the loops are simply holding one end of a beta sheet and another end of another secondary structure, for instance, an alpha helix, and they connect them into one big structure. So, this property of the loop is very useful in bringing together the overall assembly of the protein. The loops may vary in length. Some loops may be short. Some loops may be long. For instance, if two alpha helices are located at a large distance, then you will need a longer loop to hold the two ends of the alpha helices together. Or if a beta sheet is located very close to some other alpha helix, then a very small loop can connect the alpha helix and the beta sheet together as well. Importantly, these loops that bring together alpha helices and beta sheets are mostly located on the surface of the protein. The surface of the protein is exposed to the outer world and therefore can have interactions with the external world or other proteins. So therefore, loops gain a lot of importance in that aspect. More so, the loops, they are open to accepting mutations or changes. Because their job is to keep the structure intact, they do not compromise on that even if the sequence changes. So if the amino acid sequence changes and the loop disengages from the alpha helix or the beta sheet then of course the entire protein structure will fall into parts. Next the loops are flexible so the same reason that the job of the loop is to keep the structure intact so therefore it has to be flexible in order to keep the structure intact and they can have multiple conformations as a result. So the same structure can be preserved by multiple conformations of the loop. Also, loops tend to have charged and polar amino acids. This is because they have to interact with other proteins. So they need to be active. If the loop is hydrophobic, then it will not be interested in talking to other amino acids or other uh, polypeptides or other proteins. Lastly, 
The loops are frequently components of the active sites, as I just mentioned earlier. Next is the coils. So coils are those substructures or secondary structures or two prime structures, which are neither alpha helices, nor beta sheets, nor the loops. So these are some kind of disordered regions within the amino acid sequence and we call them the coils. Although they may be disordered as our understanding of them is limited, but we have seen that they also play a very important role in the protein-protein interaction. So in conclusion, the loops and coils are two other forms of the secondary structures besides the alpha helices and beta sheets. The loops and coils are active. They are exposed on the surface of the protein. They help the protein to talk to the external world or other proteins. And also, they are mostly present in the active sites on the surface of proteins.